from Trauma to Magic Mushrooms. This episode was just recorded live. My guest was Mike Steed, and he basically talks about his life. Growing up, traumatized, finally had to resort to magic mushrooms, and what an incredible story. You're going to love this. Thank you so much for being with me today. I am Dr. Dave. This is Microdose U. Enter the world of magic mushrooms with Microdose U. If you don't mind, Mike, um, give us like a little synopsis about like pretend it's kind of like your first episode and give us a little bit of a synopsis about your life um, and what happened and, and then where it's gone. And then we'll kind of open it up to some questions. So you don't, don't feel you have to share every single thing because we'll definitely catch a lot of stuff with questions. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll kind of start from the beginning and then we can go from there and stop me if you need to. But um, so, yeah, obviously I was raised Mormon. Uh, I grew up in Utah. Um, I was the third of seven kids, so a big Mormon family. Um, and I was all in it ever since I was young. Like, I really, like, resonated with it. It was my identity. It was my connection with God. It was my, like, worldview, a uh, complete worldview growing up. You know, I, I didn't leave the church until I was 33 years old, and that was, like, 10 years ago. So um, I was in it for a long time. Um and I grew up, I had a really lovely childhood, very loving family. Um, you know, my, my parents were well off. I had good friends. I bring that up because when we talk about trauma later on, I want to just point out that, you know, like I never thought of that word trauma until much later in my life where uh, when I went to therapy and started dealing with issues. Um, but because growing up, I'm like, oh, I had a you know, as we say in Mormonism, I was raised by goodly parents. My parents were loving, they were kind, um, you know, they weren't perfect, but they were, you know, good enough parents. Um, and then around the time, so I was in it, loved it. I got called to serve a mission in Brazil. And around that time, I started experiencing really intense anxiety and depression. Now I'd had depression like through like a, uh, uh, you know, high school, junior high, but I always associated it with like sinning, right? I always thought like, oh, like if if I'm keeping the commandments, then I'm going to be happy because that's what, you know, it's promised in Mormonism that if you keep the commandments, it, you're going to be happy. And so it wasn't, um, it wasn't until before my mission when I, I felt like I was doing everything right and I felt awful. I just felt like I couldn't shake it. It felt like a gnawing sense of guilt. Like I had done something wrong. I remember going and, you know, in Mormonism, we like uh, confess things to our ecclesiastical leader, our bishop. And I would go and I, I almost had like this OCD need to confess to him. Like I would confess everything, tell him everything I did, just like anything to kind of get rid of this feeling, but it wasn't going away. And I remember having a lot of talks before my mission, before I went. So it's a two year mission for those who are unfamiliar um with mormonism but you know got a lot of encouragement just like look this is satan he's trying to keep you from going on your mission go out there you're going to feel great well i went out there and just felt worse and made it the whole two years but it was awful <laughs> i mean it was a good experience but it was also just like you know i remember trying to preach happiness to people but i didn't feel happy you know, here I was supposed to have like the answers at 19 to what a happy life should be. And I, I felt like I was lying. But even then I felt like, you know, I believed in the church. So it was like the problem must be me, obviously. So I thought, you know, I was the problem. Um, and that's kind of where the beginning of like the cracks started with Mormonism. So I, I came home from my mission, still very believing, but still like really disappointed that like, my, you know, my mental health wasn't good. Um, I started questioning things in the church because I remember, you know, I was in some really poor areas in Brazil and seeing like the richness, even though they, they had such poor lives, the richness of their life, like their life, their lives were full. They had family and uh, they, you know, uh, I don't know how to like, just like close community, friendship, love, like they, they, their lives were full, even though they were so poor. And I remember uh, getting picked up at the airport 
and again on I-15 driving from Salt Lake City to my home in, in Farmington, which is like uh, 15 miles north of Salt Lake and seeing all like the fancy houses, you know, lining the hills and just feeling like the emptiness of those houses. Like there were rich, opulent McMansions lining the hills, but empty compared to like the fullness of like the Brazilian people. And so that was just like sitting with me. And then it wasn't until, you know, it, it just, it was a slow unraveling of Mormonism from then, like a lot of podcasts. I, I you know, I found a, a, an ex-Mormon po uh, podcast called Mormon Stories, where people would share their stories of like their doubts about the church. And so I started listening to that. Um, but even then I, I was still believing but then about 10 years ago, um, so I, I started kind of like investigating the different issues. Um, like a big one for me was uh, the Prop 8 campaign out here in California, which was to make uh, marriage just between a man and a woman. Well, the church like really fought hard against that. Um, or no, I fought in favor of that. I'm sorry supported in favor of making marriage between a man and a woman and it felt so wrong to me that the church would be you know dumping all this money into this campaign to limit you know other people's it, it was kind of like why don't we just live and let live um and eventually it was enough that my faith just broke and crashed and with that became like you know, my entire sense of identity, my entire worldview. I mean, it was one of the most painful experiences where it's just like, what, so disorienting too. Like, I, who am I at that point? Um, and from there, I, I, I started just, I became like a very hardcore atheist. I was like, well, this life's all there is. Um, you know, I threw everything out with it. Um, and was starting to feel better with that because I wasn't feeling the pressure of the church, but I was still dealing with all this uh, depression and anxiety. Like I, and it would, it would come up, it would resurface in times. And then till finally, uh, mushrooms is what kind of led me to like a better mental health. So I was actually with my co-host of the podcast, Doug, we were in Utah for a fantasy football draft of all things. We had like this ex Mormon fantasy football league. And we were there in, in Utah and, you know, we were going to like keep drinking that night, get drunk, you know, go out on the town, just, you know. Um, but instead, this other friend who I had from high school was like, hey, Mike, come up to this reggae festival and come do mushrooms with me. So Doug and I went up there and, the, you know, the reggae festival was winding down for the night. It's like 10 p.m. And he gave us some mushrooms as we were like in the R RV on the way up. And they kick in. And I remember like first being very disoriented. Like we were, we were at some stage and it was like the local bands playing now. And I started panicking like, oh, here I go. You know, I've left the church. Now I'm doing drugs. Now, you know, like I've, I'm on a slow spiral to hell. And I remember this man in a butterfly costume was like flapping his butterfly wings around me. And I was just like terrified. Oh, but then my friend, like, I, I don't want to get too much into that story. We, we talk about it on the podcast, but eventually the night ended. You know, my friend who was kind of guiding us through the, the journeys, like, could sense that we were disoriented, brought us around this fire. And he, for the entire night, he's a beautiful musician. He just played us the most, like, ethereal, beautiful music. And I remember, it was like a remembering. I don't know if you've had that before with mushrooms, but it was like this, it was like this, oh, this is what it feels like to be Mike. And I'd forgotten. And I felt like I'd kind of my soul had snapped back into place. And I was like, oh, this, it felt so good. And the thing about it is it, it remained, not, no, not to that intensity, but like for the, I didn't do anything, any other psychedelics for a whole year afterwards as I was integrating that and just kind of like, but I could recall that feeling of like, oh, there is more. I remember something. I remember more of my personality, more like parts of myself that I repressed. Um, and it just felt so good, so freeing. And then, you know, so a whole year went by. Um, and then I went to, I, I did mushrooms one more time, and this was a bigger dose this time. 
And for the next two weeks, I felt so great. Um, and then something something happened, like an event triggered it. And then I just felt awful again. And I'm like, well, what is this? And so I'm like, I've got to go see a therapist. I got to figure this out. Like, And in the first session, I found, found this good therapist who I'm still seeing today, by the way. She's amazing. And we, um, in the first session, I'm just sobbing to her talking about like the, 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 the growing up Mormon and the guilt around like masturbation and sexual, uh, sexuality, um, at the difficulty of going on a Mormon mission. And towards the end of the session, after I'm done, just like crying for 45 minutes, she's like, okay, I want you to read this book. It's called complex PTSD. And this will help you kind of, we're going to work through this trauma you've experienced. And I was like, trauma, what do you know? It was complex PTSD. Like what? No, come on. Like, and she kind of gives me this look like, all right, you're a 40 year old man who's been crying in my office for the last hour about things that happened to you 20, 30 years ago. If that's not trauma, what word do you want to use for it? <laughs> you can come up with another word if you want, but, <laughs> um, and that, the combination of therapy. And then it's, it's like psychedelics also opened up a whole world of like, yoga and mindfulness and meditation and breath work and all these other practices um so then to kind of fast forward a little bit COVID hit and you know that's a scary time for all of us like the world is very disorienting at that time and but it allowed me like the work the, the world also paused and so it allowed me to really deepen into some of these practices that i've been getting into you know i'd wake up in the morning and do yoga i'd wake i started doing this kundalini yoga sadhana where i'd wake up at 4 30 with this group online and we would do kundalini yoga for uh 40 straight days and i remember my co-host doug called me at the time and we had just done like a mushroom we each done separate mushroom journeys over the weekend and we were just laughing you know talking about the funny things that came up the weirdness of it all and he's like mike we should start a podcast i could listen to you to tell like funny mushroom stories all the time and of course, I was like, no, there's no way I could do a podcast. I can't, I can't do that. Like, and then the next morning, you know, I was doing that. I was in the middle of that 40 day sadhana and I was in the glow of it. So you wake up at 430, there's a bunch of like meditations, kriyas, mantras. In the end, I was kind of basking in the glow of it. And I text Doug, I'm like, Doug, what if, what if it's not just a podcast where we tell funny trip stories, but what if we also talk about all these things we're doing, all these, like this almost like the reverse of a Mormon mission where when we were missionaries, we thought we had all the answers and we're trying to teach the truth to the world. What if it's two Mormons like being like, oh, we don't know shit. <laughs> and instead, like with wide eyed curiosity, like what are all these new modalities? What are these things? And, you know, soon, you know, so we start the podcast. He was totally on board. And next we're talking to people who, know things about aliens and know things about <laughs> we just dive into this whole world of like what is life and it's been that was almost four years ago and it's been such an adventure and i've met the coolest people had the time of my life um it's led me to so now um i i through my therapist and working with dreams with her i became so fascinated with dreams and how dreams can uh how working with dreams can just be so, such a powerful tool, especially in combination with like, I mean, because the the journey imageries that you get in like on a mushroom journey, very similar to a dream image, very metaphorical, very fluid, very, uh, very weird. <laughs> and so I've got, gone back, I've been doing a PhD for three years. This is, I'm wrapping up my coursework uh, this fall and then I'll start my dissertation. And then I will have, a PhD in depth psychology at Pacifica Graduate Institute in Santa Barbara. So it's led my life on a whole new trajectory. And I've never felt more free. I've never felt more alive. Uh, I've never felt like stronger mental health wise, and not in the sense that I always feel happy, but in the sense that I'm, I feel like I could navigate. I'm okay with being sad when I'm sad. I'm okay with being angry expressing anger I'm, I'm okay with like flowing more okay i'm not saying i'm totally okay with it but like you know what i mean it's like such a more fluid stronger 
mental health than I've ever had. And I owe a lot of it to mushrooms. Mushrooms were what got me to go to therapy. They got me into all these other practices. I'm not saying that they are like a panacea, but they're such an incredible tool. And what has it unlocked for me? I mean, I was even joking with my co-host a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, Doug, do you think maybe we're still on that first mushroom journey? Like, this is just like our life. <laughs> like, we're going to wake up tomorrow like, oh, wait, this last four, last four years was just one long extended trip. And to be honest with you, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> so that's, that's a, I mean, that's my story in a nutshell, I guess. Mike, um, I don't even know how to thank you for sharing this. This was, I mean, just the way you succinctly explained your life from a child to now is, um, wow. I mean, you, you did a great job. It, thank you so much for, for just opening up like that and sharing this with, with everybody. Um, just to, and we're going to, uh, and we're, I'm going to bring Denise on in a couple of seconds. She's got some questions for you. I know. And then we're going to open it up to questions from people that are here live. So, um, Nakama, if you're here and if you want to uh, type something into the Q&A, make sure you do it now and we'll, we'll try our best to get to all the questions. We'll do our absolute best. I haven't looked yet. I have no idea how many there are, if any, but um, we will check them out. Um, and I'll talk to you later about contacting you if necessary. But I do, I do want to put this out there in the case anybody's interested, if you want to write this down. Um, the name of Mike and Doug's podcast is Mormons on Mushrooms. It's very easy to remember. You're not going to forget that. And I will tell you, it is absolutely awesome. They, they do a great job. They're total pros, and their stories are just unbelievable. So Mormons on Mushrooms. Um, I'm going to bring – Denise, um, come on back here, and I want to talk to you for a couple of seconds before – and you've got some questions for Mike. But one thing I actually was um, – I had on, in my notes here to talk about at the very beginning when I brought you on, but I totally forgot as – as what it would happen, it, this stuff happens, you know, when you're live, um, you get caught up in the moment and you just sometimes forget things. So I do want to mention um, Denise and I um, have come up with a program together that we do help people. Because a lot of you that are on here tonight are brand new to this and you, you might have never experienced microdosing mushrooms. You, you don't know anything about them and that's totally fine. And then others of you are very, very experienced. And um, over the couple of years two or three years that i've had this podcast I've, I've been on my microdosing journey for a little over three years now um i've had so many people say well how do i do this like what do i do i, I don't feel comfortable doing this on my own and so um dr denise and i have a formal program it's a one-on-one -on -one program where we pretty much take you from start and hold your hand and and get you and it's not only about microdosing magic mushrooms or using psychedelics or using mushrooms it's really the most important part of the program is to get you to feel exactly the way you want to feel every day or as mike said you know every day is not perfect i mean you, you still feel emotions if something bad happens you're going to feel that and we want to feel that but you also want to feel really good every day in general and we can get you to your goals and get you to where you want to be and help you along the path with microdosing, if that's what you choose. And, and I asked me this question the other day, well, Dr. Dave, do I have to microdose if I want to be in your program? Like, I really want, I'm not feeling great now. Um, I really know, I kind of know where I want to be, but I'm just not feeling it and I don't know how to get there. Well, but I don't really want to use magic mushrooms. Well, guess what? That's, we will, that's totally fine. We will absolutely work with you and do everything we can. And we've had a bunch of people go through this program already who, We've gotten back on track. Uh, they've gotten their lives back on track, and it's working very well. So um, we never beg. We never um, insist that you do this. It, it, the right people that want to do this will find us. And you can just send me an email, uh, send Dr. Denise an email, and just let us know you're interested, and, and we'll take it from there. But, again, we don't beg anybody. We don't pressure you. We don't, I don't make a million announcements about it. But Because, again, those of you that know, that know you want to change and, and know you need some help, you'll, you'll find us. So having said that, uh, Dr. Denise, welcome back. And I know you've got some questions. And, and Mike, by the way, uh, one more thing before Denise, sorry, had once. Uh, when you mentioned um, driving along I-15 in the Salt Lake Valley and looking up at the Wasatch Mountains um, and, and um, seeing those beautiful, large, large houses and the way you described it, um, I can't remember your exact words, but they were, they just felt empty or something like that. I 
I totally, totally understand what you mean by that. 100%. That was a really great analogy. And then the people in Brazil who maybe didn't have much, they were content and happy with their lives every day or as much as possible. So I, I loved that analogy, Mike. Thanks for that. Denise, go ahead. Take it. I'll, I'll stop talking. Take it away. <laughs> we need to have these longer, right? So thank you. And, you know, I, tonight's the first time I'm meeting you, Mike, and I'm just so appreciative. And um, you, you know that we kind of had some questions ahead of time. I, I'm not sure if you saw them or not. Um, but in listening to you, you answered every single one of the questions without me yet, yet asking them. But it brought to mind a few things. And there, there's a, a couple of extra ones that I was thinking of. And, um, and your story is amazing. And um, and one of the reasons we do work with people, by the way, is because it really is, like you said, Mike, that combination, you know, the psychedelics along with the work alongside. One of my questions was, have you done anything else? And you answered that. I know you do the podcast. I've listened to a few episodes. But that, you know, that work that we have to do that we can't just take mushrooms and be like, OK, that's all I have to do, like the mainstream medical model. So all of those things that you're doing Um and I, and I also, I wrote down some of the things you said, you know, I'm, I am a psychologist, I have a full practice. I see a lot of symptoms, anxiety, depression, attention deficit, and absolutely trauma. And I will often get the question, I don't know if I have trauma, do you think I have trauma? And the question for, the answer for me would be, well, let's see. But I can unequivocally now say, anybody who's alive now has trauma. And the reason I could say that is you brought up the pandemic. We had a global trauma. And while that presented some opportunities for people, especially you, you were able to kind of, you know, get on and do the Kundalini yoga. And there were so many things. The world was, as you described, your sense of identity, your worldview, and who you were when you were sort of went to Brazil and looking at the mountains. And that is a clear trauma. And we talk about CPTSD because there's complexity, right? So for anybody who wants to just quickly know, like, you know, if I saw a car accident or I was in a car accident and it scared me and, you know, really terrible, I was fine, but my car went out of control, there's a trauma. When you have profound questions about like, who are you, your worldview, like everything turns upside down, that's, that is that complex PTSD. And we know that psilocybin psychedelics but specifically psilocybin absolutely rewires and helps people heal that and so along with the other work that you um have described and i'm so again i don't know you're meeting you for the first time when you said a therapist and a good therapist that is a rare thing actually so i love that you have someone and that you can you know do that work who truly gets that um because that's that's pretty difficult so um one of the questions i wasn't i didn't hear you answer of all the list here that i thought i was going to ask you so we're going to save a lot of time um do you currently dose and do you do like so our you know what the the work that uh, Dr. Dave and I do is about microdosing. People can take lower doses, higher doses, not do dose at all, but the podcast and like the, the programs, it's all microdosing. So I just wanted to ask you if you had a particular dose schedule, do you microdose? Do you always take higher doses? Uh, what, what's that for you? So I've done, you know, a lot of higher doses, but then also a lot of, I've done microdosing quite a bit. Um, but I, I've never been good at following a protocol. <laughs> um, for me, it's more, much more of an intuitive in pr approach. Like there'll be days like I did um, yesterday and the day before, and then I didn't today. And but before that, I don't think I'd done any any microdoses for like a month or two. Um, I have these little capsules, and it's just it's just kind of like when I, I just um, feel like it. Um, or sometimes when I remember, <laughs> it's uh, I, I find that when I do it um it usually helps there's a focus aspect to it i mean it, it's a little tricky though it's not always it doesn't always help me focus because sometimes it wa wants me to go to more of a creative space um but what it always does is it reminds me to get in touch with my body like you know that the, the microdose will start to happen and the first thing i'm doing I'm like oh my gosh i'm stretching i'm realizing the tension i'm holding here i'm yawning i'm like you know, it's, it's like a reminder to kind of get out of your head and into your body. And, um, 
it, and I like how you said it's, um, I mean, it's a tool. It, that's, that's all it is. It, you are the medicine. And so, you know, for those listening who don't want to do mushrooms, there's so many other modalities. I mean, I think a lot of this is let's get back into the body. Let's get like, you know, get out of it. We're so used to living in our head. Um, and so just a reminder to get up, move our body, stretch, do like, there's a lot of practices you can do, like the body scans, just body scanning. Where do I feel tension right now? Get curious about the tension. Um, just little practices like that can make a huge difference. And a lot of times, what the the because you know the whole point about micro microdosing is you're not really supposed to feel it too much. It kind of operates under the surface. Um, but that's the one thing I do always notice is that oh yeah, um, I'm just so much more aware of my body than when I when I don't. That's fantastic thank you and and I, I will say to you because I do a lot of coaching on dosing and schedules and whatever that intuitive is a protocol <laughs> oh it is okay so I'm doing, okay I do follow protocol there we go <laughs> yeah so um yeah I mean when you know you dose when you feel like it and you're experienced and so you can sort of just feel it and know it and trust that intuitive connection to the wisdom of the mushrooms and, and know how to work with all that, you can do that. So a lot of times when people are starting out, they want to kind of track what they're doing. So we say, okay, start with twice a week or do this or do that. And, you know, kind of, we go from there. Um, and I did want to, I used to say sub perceptible uh, with microdosing, you know, certainly higher doses, you're definitely going to feel it, you know, tripping macro doses, but at a microdose level, we used to say sub perceptible. A lot of people say that, um, Paul Stamets and I, and I have adopted this. It's sub, in, sub intoxicating, meaning you're not supposed to feel super high and like, whoa, I'm really on something, but you definitely feel it. And oftentimes people dial in their dose based on, oh, I feel a little something. That's good. Maybe I'll take a little more. Okay. That's a little bit much. Okay. Back up. And that's the, the right dose. So you feel it. But even if you don't, it's always working. And we know that. Um, so just sort of a couple other things. So, you know, the, the, um, the trauma and it being so profound in your life and your unique journey, and now you're actually, you know, finishing a doctorate in dissertation. I mean, that's just, wow, that's just amazing. I mean, welcome to the profession, right? <laughs> and like, I'm sure you're going to, it, it, you know, integrate all of this work. I mean, we know psychedelics assisted therapy is a big um, revolutionizing mental health and, um, the I'll just mention like that veterans like war veterans are the face of trauma and using psychedelics specifically microdosing psilocybin and it is saving lives so I, it kind of two questions but I'm going to merge them here the idea that like you know that mushroom saves lives because it heals heals trauma and we know that trauma causes a lot of physical symptoms. And when you just said that, you know, when you dose, you kind of get into the body. Stress, trauma, depression, anxiety, those things cause physical health issues. So we are taking care of ourselves. We're extending the quality and quantity of our lives. And, you know, war veterans are certainly advocating for that. They have one of the highest, you know, suicide rates and their suicide rate is declining. And they're saying, absolutely this needs to be more in the forefront as it's becoming as far as a medicine um, because it is really healing it's not just treating and like numbing it's actually changing without being on all these other you know psychopharmacology what whatever so i just wanted to like bring up that topic and see um i mean it's well by the way why it's so in the news and it's like the fda and all you know really trying to fast track it for approval so that it can be more um, you know, legal and approval and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to, you know, given that it's the first time I'm meeting you, um, you know, the question sort of like, do you have, like, it's more like a comment about, you know, sort of that, um, you know, it really changing and saving lives, your life or anybody else's, what your sort of thoughts were about that. Yeah, um, so good, because I mean, we've had, so on the podcast we do, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> as david knows for being a guest you know we, we sometimes like we go on tangents we we have a hard time like sticking to a schedule or sticking to a, a you know a, we, we have a hard time sticking to anything and so like the, the podcast if you know we've done like 170 episodes now in the last four years and it's a combination of 
sometimes it's just Doug and I, sometimes we bring on a guest, sometimes we bring on, we just, what are we feeling like today, you know? Um, but, but of those 170 episodes I bet we brought on, at least half of them have been guests. And the stories we get of people, um, you, you know, saving them from suicide ideation, from uh, just the, just, I, it's so surprising. It, it's still surprising to me today, just how helpful it's been for people, right? Like, um, and it's, I'm, I'm always in awe of these stories that we get when, when people come on to tell their stories. And, you know, there is a little bit of an up and down too. people. people it's, a, it's a relationship you're developing. Like if you, so if you decide to use psychedelics, um, you're developing a relationship with that specific medicine. And, um, you know, it, it can ebb and flow. <laughs> it's just like any relationship, right? Um, but for the most part, like you see it like really improving the quality of life. Uh, I, you know, we, we, we uh, interviewed several people who were out actually like active believing Mormons when they went down this, or when they started using psychedelics. And, and one of the questions was, well, how, how could you justify that? And they're always like, look, I was out of options. I'd been on SSRIs for God knows how many years. I was, I just, I, I, it was my last hope. And they found that renewal through it. And, and usually it opens the door to like all these other modalities. And, you know, they, then they start going to therapy or then they start, or, or the therapy actually starts working now, <laughs> you know, like, um, cause in conjunction with therapy it can be very powerful. Um, in fact, I would always almost recommend that, that some, you have a good therapist, because especially if you're going to be doing larger or, you know, like bigger doses, more than a microdose, because you're going to want someone to process the imagery that comes up, um, to integrate it with, whether it's an integration, there's a lot of people out there that, that specialize in psychedelic integration, a lot of therapists. Um, and so I would highly recommend that because sometimes those you know, depending on the journey, it can be pretty disorienting sometimes. And you're going to want yeah. someone to talk it through. Yeah, absolutely. You bring up a great point. And you mentioned when you were describing your story about the dreams. And we do see that there's more imagery sometimes when people start microdosing. I've worked with people that really don't recall their dreams. They start dosing and the dream material is there. And it's the language of the soul. And it really helps guide like a little bit of a roadmap. So, you know, that combination. And if you have the you know, benefit of finding a therapist that really knows how to work with all of that. It, it, it is life changing. So it, you know, absolutely, um, you know, heals yeah. and changes. And, you know, it, it certainly everyone who, you know, follows us and, and the podcast and, and, and these webinars knows that that's absolutely what I um, have personally experienced, professionally experienced. And I've been advocating for this for a really long time because I know it really does heal. And I will say this, and I don't know if you found this, Mike, um, and we're going to get to questions in just a minute, um, that sometimes along the path, you handle, you, you encounter very difficult material. You don't necessarily feel better. You know, like all of a sudden people will say to me, oh, you know, Dr. Denise, why am I feeling so terrible? I was feeling so great. And now I feel like all of a sudden all this, you know, sort of pain and anxiety. And it's like the, the mushrooms along with the work that we're doing or dreams, et cetera, will guide us right to where the healing is needed. And, and it is good to have some guidance with that sometimes, or, you know, just sort of maybe, you know, have, especially if you're doing higher doses, like you mentioned, somebody who's really able to be helpful and grounding in, in that process. So thank you. Um, yeah, for absolutely. All that just, a, just one comment on that, that the first time I did, so right before we started the podcast, before the idea of the podcast came up, Doug and I, we did ayahuasca together. And that's a very intense, you know, psychedelic. Um, and I left that session. It was profoundly life-changing. But I left there feeling like I had to carry the world's emotions. Like it was my job to like, ooh, because it was showing me, you know, it's very energetic in those trip spaces. And so it was showing me the people who we were like doing the medicine with that I was like, it was almost like a funnel of like emotion and I was like the, the center of it. And so I, I left there feeling that way. And then I'm glad I had a, a good therapist. And she's like, I think it's showing you that this is what you tend to do. Like you pull people, like, you're pulling emotions from people or like, and then carrying them as if they were your own. 
like let's let's rephrase this and i'm so glad otherwise i'd been like maybe leaving that thing like oh yeah here i am i'm uh, the plight of the empath kind of deal <laughs> and it's like she's beautiful. like no girl <laughs> yeah that's beautiful yeah really good example of like how to then relate to that material that comes up, whether it's through an ayahuasca, psilocybin, dream material, et cetera, et cetera. Thank I you. Love so I, dreams. I love dreams. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a big part of, I like I use dreams a lot. So yeah. So glad to hear you mention all that. Go ahead, Dave. It's interesting about the dream thing because um, I Denise has done some very small webinars just with a very small group of people um or maybe not even web or maybe like a zoom meeting with a small group of people about dreams and i was thinking that maybe the next webinar we do here could be about dreams because they're so fascinating and so many unanswered questions and i know denise um you are really good at, at explaining and talking to people about dreams so maybe we can make that either in the next webinar or a very a very future one, a very um one in the near a very near future um also, I the poll here, um, most of you have answered, 87% have answered the poll. And I just want to share with you, so the, the question was, have you had trauma in your life? And it's simply yes, no, or I'm not sure. Well, this is very interesting. So 72% said yes so far. 21% said I'm not sure. So if my math is right, that's already, that's 93% that didn't say no. And I'm telling you, as, as Dr. Denise just said a little while ago, um, the ones that you, if you said you're not sure, um, you've had trauma. You, so we can really pretty much put you in that yes category. So 7% um, of has said no, good for you. Um, as one of you said, I think Denise or Mike just said about, about um, uh, COVID, uh, you know, COVID's still going kind of, but you know, we had a, a real bad couple of years at least for about COVID. If, if that wasn't traumatic, man, I mean, I don't know what was. So, but anyway, thanks for answering the poll. We have, um, so you had 90% of you now have answered. So we're at, so um, if you, the rest of you want to want to answer it, it's fine. It's totally anonymous, totally anonymous. So you can feel free to just click off your answer. That's totally fine. Let's get to some questions for Mike. Um, Amber, it's not a question, but she said, um, thank you both for sharing this healing journey. Amber, you are very welcome and um, really cool. You know, having Mike on here, I mean, I know he's got a great podcast, but I didn't really know how this was going to go. But I mean, I, I was really, really touched with Mike sharing his his um, journey throughout his life. Um, so you're, you're very welcome, Amber. Um, Julie asked a question. It's for Mike. Um, Have your trips all been about religious trauma? Or has anything else come up that's been healing for you? That's a good question. And no, they've not all just been about religious trauma. There's been, in fact, you know, when you start going down uh, this, you know, we, I feel like, how can I best phrase this? So it, it, let's tie into this. So the dissertation I plan on writing is actually more about anset the ancestral psyche. And how I think we inherit a lot of things, not just our the strengths and our genetics from our ancestors, but we also inherit a lot of their trauma. And like the, um, I've had experiences where, um, especially in a psychedelic space, where I've had images of things that like my grandparents went through come up and, and the, the felt emotions of those experiences. You know, I had both of my grand, grand, uh, grandpas served in World War II and very specific imagery of World War II coming up in some of those uh, journeys. Now, you could, I, I don't know, it's one of those things you're in that space, it's very metaphorical, right? Am I seeing a vision of what happened to them in their life? Am I making it all up? Is it just this? I, the, the whole question though is the felt, the, the felt, like the, the, the emotions, the felt aspect of it is real, whether or not the imagery is metaphorical or not. But um, so, no, and I even think, you know, uh, there's been some stuff come up earlier, like around, I think people experience birth kind of trauma. And, you know, like the birthing process is very traumatic uh, for an infant. Um, so all sorts of different things can come up. And um, so not all about religion, although that, <laughs> that, especially the two year Mormon mission, I feel like was a pressure cooker for a nervous nervous system. You know, one of the things about complex PTSD is like, where PTSD is like a, a single or like a, or maybe not single, but those big traumatic events, like Denise, you were talking about like a car accident or 
uh, you know, serving in the military or something, but uh, when you're in, living for an extended period of time and when your nervous system is dysregulated, you don't have the time for the parasympathetic nervous system to, to kick in and recover. Uh, that's where you get like the complex trauma. And so a lot of that, so a lot of it has been around uh, the Mormon mission, especially. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we have um, another question and it's somewhat, um, I feel like maybe on some level answered partially. Um, and, and that dysregulation, by the way, sorry, before I say the question, um, you know, we are all traumatized in the birth process, as you say, is trauma. It's normal trauma in the sense of that sounds like an oxymoron. We are hardwired to cope in life, but when there is an over abundance of dysregulation or getting way more kind of tossed at us than we are capable of handling or at an age or so anything really it can be so run the gamut um it, it, it is trauma and trauma that's not like the normal trauma you know that we just like sort of get through oh if that was whatever like we're hired we are hardwired but then we get dysregulated and we know that. And so, you know, never if someone says, well, I don't think you've been traumatized or I think you're like, it's not, that's not really the conversation. The conversation is more, how are we doing? If you feel like you're not feeling okay, that you're like dysregulated, that's worth kind of addressing. And we know that psilocybin can, can handle that. Okay. on to the question. The question is, do you recall the dose of that initial um, first dose that you had and then the second part of that question is, which, if any, which, if any, do you feel help more, the microdosing or the higher macrodosing? Oh. So first dose and then that, that micro versus macro. That's the question because, you know, it's like at this point, it's like, where does one begin? Where does one end? Right. It's like all part of my journey, especially, they, you know, I would argue that even of all of it, working with my dreams has been the most effective thing I've done because it's, you know, you, we go into it like a psychedelic space every night when we dream. I mean, it, it's very similar as emotion surfacing and it's so ongoing. Um, I would say that um, for someone looking to work with this, um, microdosing is enough of a tool if you're looking to improve your life. Now, if you're also curious, because there is a fun aspect to this as well, right? There is like an exploration and adventurous aspect to it. You know, I think I've become a little bit of a psychonaut over the last few years. I mean, once we started the podcast, then of course we're getting all these invitations. And of course you're like, well, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna try this one now, you know, <laughs> Not that, like I'm gonna just try everything. But uh, when it calls to me, I check. So like right now what happens is like, I usually don't, intentionally seek certain medicines but like if something comes like an offer comes into my realm and i'm like oh this this feels right i'll check in with my body i'm like okay this feels right i want to do this I'll, I'll i'll participate um so i don't know if i can say which one's been more effective but i i feel like as far as mental health is concerned and kind of getting back to a state where you are processing your emotions and navigating life in a, 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 a more like a healthier way. I think microdosing is sufficient for that. I don't think you need to do it, but, um, but the, the big justice are kind of fun. <laughs> um, we have, so we have all types of people that are here attending and some are um, very experienced with mushrooms and psychedelics and others are, are brand new to it. So this is a question more for somebody that's a little bit newer to it. But uh, the question is, I mean, I think you answered this already, part of it already, but I'll just read it. How often do you take mushrooms? Well, you already told us, Mike, that you kind of, you don't have a set regimen and you kind of do it when you want to by feel. But um, this person also says, I understand you took two or three macro doses. Um, so I'm going to reword this a little bit. Um, when do you decide if you're going to take a microdose or if you're going to take a macrodose at a certain session? And not only that, mm -hmm. this, the question goes on to say, uh, and this is a little bit more of a beginner level, but some people do, do not know this. Under, they don't understand exactly what's the actual difference between a microdose and a macrodose. Um, we'll start with that one between the microdose and macrodose. Um, and Denise defined it very well. Like you said, 
it's not like necessarily sub perceptual because I like every time I take a, mac a microdose, I'm perceiving something. Like I said, I'm perceiving getting my body, but um, I'm not. I'm present. I'm not. I'm not in some other. I'm, I'm. I don't have an issue like staying present. Um, and which can be, and it, it, it tricky sometimes because, like for example, like you, sometimes the dosing on mushrooms. Usually, if you're taking, you know, microdose like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you're always going to just be in that like microdose level. But you know, if you're, I've taken some where it's like double that sometimes and felt very little, and sometimes it's like, oh wait, this is really hitting me. It just kind of de depends on a lot. I don't know a lot of different factors. Um, and so I would, I mean, I, I would, I mean, quantity wise, I would say anything over like a gram, you're getting more into like macrodose. Um, maybe even half a gram to, you know, usually uh, less than half a gram is more of a microdose territory. Um, and, you know, very different experiences in that one, you know, you are your ego, um, where your center, like your center of the, your conscious self is going somewhere else than kind of where you're at in the moment. Um, and you know, I used to, when I, early on in this, it was like when I needed to shake something up, I felt like when I was, you know, getting uh, kind of rigid and I was just like, look, I just want to kind of shake something up. Uh, I would usually do like a macrodose. Um, and now, you know, it's I'm just kind of looking at it different where lately, you know, when we first started the podcast, I think our tagline was, um, what do we say? Uh, exploring higher consciousness while healing from toxic religious shame. And we like that. But then later, like our, the, the last half of our episodes has, have been less focused on healing and more focused on like re-enchantment. Kind of like the healing is the healing is realizing that you were never broken to begin with. That, um, you know, and then, but it, sometimes we have to get through layers before we start realizing that, you know, we were never the problem. Um, and so uh, we've changed our tagline to, I think, like re-enchanting life or something, finding kind of re-enchantment in your day-to-day -day life. And um, so now I look at it more from an adventurous standpoint, like, when am I ready to go on another adventure? <laughs> Um, and I, I don't like right now I have nothing scheduled, but I'm sure something, I'm sure this year something will, I'm, I'm sure I'll do something this year. <laughs> it's only as we're recording this, it's only May. So I'm quite sure we probably will. But also just to, um, the person to answer the question, um, ask, ask the question, um, Guillermo, um, we, sometimes we speak in milligrams and sometimes in grams. And, and so you really need to be pretty good in your mind to, to go back and forth between the two. And I actually did a, an episode on this on my podcast, Microdose You, um, a few months back. Um, and so roughly a microdose is anywhere from 50, 50 milligrams is very, very low, but some people do microdose on 50 milligrams, which is 0.05 grams, 0.05. And then usually the upper, upper level of upper end of a microdose is some people say, and I believe ar around 0.3 grams, which that would be, 300 milligrams as you get above that as mike just said sometimes you need maybe a gram to really start feeling something a little bit stronger but sometimes you don't and sometimes you could take 0.5 grams which is 500 milligrams and that's kind of in between there somewhere and it, it, it could, some people would say that's a little bit more of a macro a macro is anything that's not a micro uh, but when you get into larger doses like heroic doses um, and so that's the way people refer to it, like very large doses. Those are generally heroic doses, generally in the um, in the four to five gram range plus something like that. So just Guillermo, just since you asked the question, just to give you an idea and anybody else that's here that is just not sure of the, um, how many grams or milligrams are in each. That's that's a short answer. And one of the things I've got from so just chime in on that real quick. I, I, I worked with this one woman once. Um, uh, she was like, you know, a shaman of sorts. And she she practiced this thing, which she's called the least effective dose, where she says, OK, for for certain people, we're just trying to get your mind at a certain frequency. You know, you could look at it it's like the different brainwave state. Right. We're just trying to get you to a certain brainwave. And sometimes that's this amount for some person. Sometimes it's this amount. 
that's really what we're trying to do. And because at that level, we can, we can, you know, I don't know alpha, beta, zeta, whatever the brain waves are, but at certain brain waves, you know, you're, you're at a state where you're that elasticity can happen and you can change your mental state in those, in those states. And so, but she's like, we're not trying to blast you off. We're trying to get you to, and I think for, for healing and therapy purposes, that's actually the most effective, like you can take those like heroic doses, but sometimes it's so hard to kind of grasp anything back from those big ones that are like meaningful to like mental health and to trauma and to healing. And so it's not always bigger, the better. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. And, my, and um, Denise, I know you've got a question lined up, ready to go, but I'm, I'm thanks for saying that, Mike, because I just there's a lot of confusion out there. And there are people out there that pretty much say the only way to use magic mushrooms for healing, you've got to take a heroic dose. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. It's just simply, simply not true. And also, sometimes that could be actually very dangerous information. So, um and, and Mike, you've done a combination of the two, which has seemed to have worked very well. I, I'm, I'm mainly microdose, but I've also done some larger doses. Um, but, but people that want to only microdose, you will get healing. You just, you know, it, it, it's, it's cumulative and, and you will get healing. So um, just make sure that if somebody's telling you the only way for this to work is a macro, that's, I, I would run really, really quickly. So Denise, go ahead. Um, I think you've got... Yeah. Another, we got some other questions here, at least at least one more. One more. Yeah, one more. Um, and I did want to just before I say that, ask the question, I, it, I always caution people, know what you're taking too, because I myself who I've been, you know, microdosing, it's I'm in my going into my third year. Um, there's one uh, variety that I have. It happens to be a, a what we call the penis envy variety. It's a lot more potent. And I normally could take 300 milligrams of uh, other variety, even another penis, uh, uh, penis envy one. This was a particularly strong one. Um, and I actually had to take some out from some of my capsules because it was um, definitely um, more of a feeling when, you know, I didn't want to have to be like teaching or working or something or other. So I, it, it, I had to adjust that. So, you know, 500 of, Golden Teachers is going to be different than 500 of like the albino uh, penis envy. So the final question that I saw was um, uh, from Jeremy, who I, I know um, what the, what this question is about, but the the sort of increase in vivid dreams to the point where there's exhaustion, um, waking up exhaust, exhausted and being like, you know, really short with people as a result of that. And um uh, I'll let you answer it if you have any suggestions or, you know, um, recommendations. Uh, if they're having so many vivid dreams that it's interrupting their sleep kind of thing. Um, yes. So I would, um, I would do something to bring some of those dreams into this waking reality. I know that might seem a bit like start at, do do a painting project, do something. Uh, whatever dream material you can recall, do something to express it, write them out, work with them. I, I think uh, that, I mean, I've had a lot of people um, who, especially like, like with recurring dreams, they might have a recurring nightmare or recurring dream that they're having, that, that they're having as soon as they start working with it. And you don't have to like consciously, you don't have to be like, oh, what does this mean? Express it, start expressing it. And then, um, more more likely than not that will start helping that the dream frequency and material and you'll get back to more like a a regular pace with it that that would be my recommendation beautiful thank you very much um you know we say that the the dreams and microdosing it brings that material so what you're saying mike is is terrific then you bring that into the day and you use that material um you know and people can have daydreams actually where you know it's kind of like all of a sudden you're Sort of thinking about something and your mind's going off so really excellent advice to bring that material to during the day and work with it a little bit so thank and you and it can Perfect. be some of the most creative material i mean i've written songs from dreams i've it, it, painted stuff it's it's incredible like the creative capacity that i mean you're getting it's almost like you're getting gifted this i know you'd rather sleep and you want to get better sleep but use that in some way and then hopefully then your psyche will be like okay he's getting the messages or he or she or whatever and then like uh 
we'll, we'll let him sleep more now. <laughs> Mike, I know your um, podcast co-host, Doug, and you, you two had just had a re recently had a gig, a, a, a musical gig where you guys were playing music uh, here right at, right outside of Salt Lake city last month. Um, did you, or, or did both of you or one or one of you, did you just start taking, I, I, something like, I don't know if I heard that on your podcast episode or not, but did you just recently start playing music when you yeah. started for all this? Was that, is that a new thing for you? Oh, but both of us. So at that time when we both had our first mushroom dose, we both knew like a few chords on the guitar. We both knew how to play a couple songs. And then from there, I mean, that's one of the beauties of all this is like we started it's like at this rush of creativity. And so we started writing music. Uh, usually we write our individual songs, but then we perform them together. We started a band called Bombadilio. And like in honor of Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, he's like the musician from Lord of the Rings. And we's, we've done a handful of shows and they're so much fun. It's like my my favorite creative outlet is to sing and to perform, especially music that I've written. And um, I think, you know, I mean, that's one of the things like five years ago, I would not have called myself a creative person. And when you're doing, it's not just the psychedelics, but when you're getting back in touch with your greater self, the self that you don't, re you don't remember who you are, like you, your ego has this very narrow view of who you are, who you are is so much bigger and deeper than that. Well, as soon as you get in touch with that, you're getting in touch with your, your inner diva, your creative center and flow with it. See what comes out. You'll be surprised that music, art, poetry, start writing, start singing start dancing expressing and all all of us are creative beings highly creative beings the fact that um you and doug both from um like you said you knew a few chords but let's say almost from scratch almost from scratch on uh, along this this journey uh, uh, now at the point where you're writing songs and performing in front of audiences that is absolutely awesome mike that's incredible Thank you. Oh my God! I, I I was I know I wanted to come to your last gig. I I, I was I can't remember what I said. I, oh yeah, I know what I was doing. I was running that race the early, early, early the next morning. But when when you guys come back to this area, um, I absolutely will come to you guys. That's that's amazing. Oh, it was such a fun show, and like yeah, and you know halfway through you kind of get in your head. We played an hour and a half set of mostly just original music, and halfway through we're like, are they getting bored? Are they? And then. At the end, they wanted more and encore, and it was a perfect like crowd. It was so much. I've I, I've been. It's been hard to. It's been harder to come back from that than it has been from like my psychedelic trips. <laughs> it's funny you said because um, sometimes we're like we're an hour into this right now. I, I start to think to myself, are the people that are here are not come out, as I say, are they getting bored? But it's just almost everybody is hanging in there. Almost every single person. We had you know, one or two drop off, but um. So I don't think anybody's getting bored. I wanted to bring up, before we close, I want to bring up one more thing because we do have a few newbies on here that just don't know or not well-versed on mushrooms. And when Dr. Denise was mentioning, mentioning penis envy uh, a little, that's, that's actually a type of mushroom. It's a type of psychedelic mushroom. So don't get any ideas that, uh, other than that. It's, it's just, it's the way it's shaped. It looks, that's what it looks like, kind of. So, um, so I just wanted to clear that, clear the air on that one. Uh, we'll go around and um, any, and then we'll close it. Any final words? Let's go to um, Denise first. Um, any final words at all? I, uh, I thank you so much, Mike, for doing this. And I just, you know, um, like welcome to the party. Like Dave started this, and it's been just uh, how can I say it? Just delightful to meet you and to hear your story and. Um, to, to have that kind of side by side, like all the work you've done, where you are and this music that you're doing, like everything you say, it's, I have to tell you that I have known that this is what can happen for people. And it's just so nice to meet you and see that that's changed your life and healed so much and that you're going to be continuing to bring that to other people. It's just amazing. And just personally for me and my work, you know, that I was always kind of the outcast, like, what are you talking about? That's none of that's going to be helpful. Um, so it really is um, very validating and helpful and just such a pleasure to hear your story and meet you. So thank you very much. Mike, and when you give your last words, please, share, again, I've already shared that your podcast is called Mormons on Mushrooms and your co-host being Doug. But if you, if there's a way that people can follow you even more or, or get in touch with you if they want. I know you've got an Instagram 
uh, mm -hmm. account. Just uh, feel free to share anything you want there as well. Yeah, David, Denise, this has been so great. I've, I've just, I love this. Anytime you guys want to chat about this, want to chat about dreams sometime, anything, I'm so game. And it, the, the questions have been great. This has been, I, I just, this lights me up. Discussions like this light me up. And David, and for people listening, David was on Worms on Mushrooms a couple months ago. I know he he wants a redo. He doesn't feel like he was, he's great in it. He, I'll just tell you, he's great in it. Check that out. It's just from a couple months ago. David came on Worms on Mushrooms and it's a great I, episode. I, I, if I could just say this, um, so Mike, Mike and Doug's podcast is very different than mine. Mine, I'm, I'm, it's, it's usually me, and I'm usually, I've got a topic, and I kind of stick to it, and I just, you know, pretty much, and sometimes I have a guest, but we stick to it. Now, on their podcast, and again, this is great. I love their show. I, I listen to so many of them, but a lot of times, they are all over the place, and they're coming up with, like, little side stories, and so I was trying to tell my story, and I just felt like... I, it, and a lot of it's on me. I just wasn't really congruent. And then adding into their whole side story thing. So I, 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 I'd love a redo. Well, I, maybe yeah. not a redo. I could just, we could just come on and talk about something else sometime. But, but, um, and you're more than welcome to come back here, Mike, because this is, uh, you're just, you exude positivity and great energy. And, and that's what we love. So you're, you're more than welcome. We'll have, we'll abs if you want to, uh, we'll love to have you come back as well. So go I ahead. I would love to. Yeah, I'd love to. And so, yeah, so David, yeah, hopefully, because I, I feel bad if you didn't feel like you got to tell your story in the way you wanted to, but like, it's a good episode. Um, but yeah, the best way to, I mean, I'd love it. If anyone wants to contact me, uh, Mormons on Mushrooms on Instagram is the best way, uh, so the best way to cut me. And I'm pretty good at responding, but I'll, I'll respond eventually. But like, I've Instagram, I don't know, social media is not my thing. And we also have the, we, we just started an Instagram page for our band, Bombadilio. Um, that's, I think we have like 80 followers there now. We're very we're like 80 followers. But you know what? I'm I'm half more happy with those 80 followers than I am with whatever we have right now on more of mushrooms because it feels so uh you know, I don't know. But that's that's the best way. This has been a delight. And yeah, you guys are great. And Denise has been so lovely meeting you. Well, again, let's um thanks thanks to you, Mike, and thanks Denise again for always being here helping me out with this co-hosting with me mike we will absolutely have you back we'll talk offline about this but again from um, the bottom of my heart and i speak for everybody here i'm sure uh, you are as, as we say on as you say on your show i usually don't talk like this on my show but i, I feel like i i feel like i just have to say this and i hope you guys don't mind but mike you are a fucking awesome human being and and i just i, I really want to do more with you and have you back and and with doug if he wants to as well you guys are you guys are really awesome. So again, um, from my heart, um, thank you so much again for being here. And um, we're going to also turn this into a regular podcast episodes, ep episode. So a lot more people are going to be experiencing you and your story. And, and this is what it's all about. The, the more we can just help people, that's that's the way I see it. And, and also one more thing. I, reson I totally resonate with those 80 people that are following you on that one Instagram uh, account with your band just think about that that's 80 people that are that really want to know more about you and your band and just think if you had a room of 80 people that were all in the, it, it's amazing so each one of those people is is a is a you know somebody that's really important so it's not always the numbers it's it's the it's the quality of the person and the energy of the person that's following you and, and so i'll i'll end it i'll end it um yeah. uh, thanks thanks again thanks again guys um, everybody that's been on here live, we appreciate your energy, your questions, your uh, telling us where you're from, everything about you. We love you. We're here to help you. And if there's anything we can ever do to help you out, um, let us know. Remember, my podcast is Microdose You, and a brand new episode comes out every single Wednesday and Friday. And as I say, on the end of every single one of my podcast episodes, and I feel like I have to say it here live to you, love you guys. Really do. Take care, and we will see you soon. <laughs>